as the breakout star, according to all of the celebrities, such as Ellen DeGeneres and Andy's good friend, elevated the entire franchise. And I made more money for them than any other talent I think they have on the network. Now, I'd like to see those numbers, if they have some numbers to say that there was another talent that made more money for them. I'd like to see that. Well, I think everybody wants to see that, Nene. But I will ask you this here, because these fans came to your aid to say, hey, we want Nene. Uh, and so they started this petition. Yes. You didn't start the petition. I did not. And it's about you. It's about Mariah, who yes. has uh, been mistreated, many feel, as well as others that haven't found their voice to stand up and right. come out and say, we demand to be treated equally. We don't right. want to be marginalized because, you know, in 2020, we saw so many things happen with black women finally starting to get their attention and recognition, whether it's Breonna Taylor and the uh, social justice ram, whether it's Vice President Kamala Harris becoming the first black woman to be vice president. So, you know what? I would also say that all the years that I worked on the show and, and I franchise a uh, housewife show already in shows, and even if the real housewife. If we were, I can't remember how many times the show was nominated. Uh, the Kardashians always won. Our black ass never won. <laughs> never won. <laughs> we never won. And when I came out uh, as the breakout star, um, and I and Kim Kardashian, I was the black girl on Kim Kardashian's gang. Um, Kim always made way more money than I have. I mean, her money was way longer than mine. Well, you bring up a, a very interesting issue, and I think we should talk about it. We have about 20 more minutes, so let's try to get everything in, Nene. Your fans don't want you to hold back. They want to hear Nene. And uh, Brian Freeman, an incredible attorney who uh, really represents a lot of great Hollywood talent, is arguing, saying that, hold on, this just isn't fair. We need to really make sure that we're talking about uh, pay equity. And mm -hmm. so a big thing that came up in Hollywood was the gender pay equity between uh, men and women. And it was mostly a white woman's issue. Um, but when you really look at it, black women suffer even greater disparate treatment when it comes to gender pay than uh, white women. And this is very fascinating to me, Nene, okay. because it speaks to who you are. Uh, I, I, my associate lawyers gave me an article that said, TV writers circulate anonymous spreadsheets to fight gender pay gap. They said that uh, executive producers working on uh, shows who were white men made 25 to 30,000 per episode while white women made fourteen to sixteen thousand per episode, and they said women of color made eight to ten thousand per episode, and so you see this great disparity. And they were all at the same studio working on the same shows, and so it speaks a lot to what you're saying about there is this inequity when it comes to how you are dealt with professionally, how you are paid professionally, and so on and so forth. So I want to talk and have you touch on those two issues. Number one, the pay equity, and then number two, the professionalism of how you were treated versus your white counterparts. How I was treated in what respect? You mean on set? Uh, behind the scenes, this is a chance for your your fans no, I was just meaning what you mean, like how I was treated in what way are you speaking? Because for the last few seasons, it's just been black on this set. But when my white counterpart was on my particular set, there was definitely a difference that I don't think people always see because it's behind the scene, okay? And if you start speaking about the shows across the board, then there is a great difference because when my white counterpart was on set, I mean, uh, shit. 
I think all these girls can speak to that. I mean, they, they just, I mean, I mean, I mean, oh my God. I mean, I mean, they come and go when they want to. They, they curse out people. They do whatever they want to do. I mean, if we cuss out anybody, we are angry black woman. So we can't cuss out nobody. I mean, if we cuss out somebody, I mean, we are, I mean, I mean, um, 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 this is just different. <laughs> I mean, we, and you never, I mean, you say I mean, one, one cuss word and you are just angry, bitter. You are horrible. They can cuss all day long and they are just had a, they just got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. So it's just different. Yeah. And, and, and you never put hands on anybody or anything like that. Listen, uh, you that watch these shows across the board. I can give you example after example. You have never see me in a physical altercation on this show all the years that I've been on this show. Now, you have watched physical altercation after physical altercation on this show, black and white, okay? Now, I grabbed my cameraman's shirt. It was never anything serious, ever. He never thought it was anything serious. But listen, I'm on a show, so I'm not going to try to to change any of that. I should have never touched his shirt or anything. Although he never felt it was anything serious, I never felt anything serious. The show, play it however they want to play it. I should have never touched him. Forget it. They have altercations on this show where people are going to jail. I ain't never went to jail touching nobody doing none of that, okay? They go to jail, they still at work. They go to jail, they still, they grabbing people, but they still at work. You know, I ain't grabbing nobody's ass. I don't even want to touch her ass, okay? They, that's, that's how it is. And these people still go to work. They taking each other's hairs out their head, and they still going to work. So, listen, the treatment is different, okay? That's just what it is. Yeah, and, and I was talking to attorney Brian Freeman, and he. this is a more sober aspect of the reality shows. He uh, was informing me that in the last five years, there have been 56 suicides, then a lot of it is how they try to pit people against one another and people don't even know what's going on behind the scenes, but they're just trying to build ratings up. And one of the things is you try to say, hey, you know, we don't want to make somebody feel so dejected that they go and feel like they got to take their own life. Can you speak to some of that reality? I was shocked when they said 56 suicides from reality TV personalities. You know, it's tough. I can tell you that. I have definitely gone to my executives. And this, this is another thing that the, 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 the fans who are watching don't know. I've gone to my executives several times and said, I don't want to be the villain. Why are these people ganging up against me? Why? Can you go to them for me and say, listen, I don't want to fight. I don't want to argue. I will apologize to everybody if that's what I need to do. I will make amends with everyone. And they will not do this if you guys go to them and say, Nene doesn't want to do this. I've gone to them and asked for help time and time again. And that's something the viewers don't know. I've gone and say, help me. I want help. Why? Help me get back in with them. I'm willing to talk to her. I want to talk to her. I want to work it out. Can we work it out behind the scene? Can you help us work it out? Yeah. And, and talking with uh, Attorney Freeman, he talked about some of the toughest fights are when you dare raise the uh, even slightest hint of racial discrimination. He uh, successfully represented Gabrielle Union and many other mm -hmm. uh, white stars and so forth. But he talked about how challenging that was, how the network seemed to almost be arrogant in their position when they deal with black stars and black personalities. Why? You know, is that what you found that the network talks down to you at times when you try to uh, articulate a perspective? Well, they sure ain't been helpful. I have definitely asked for help. I have asked for help multiple times and I have not gotten it. I can tell you that I have gone to everybody. I have sent emails. I have asked time and time again to help me and I have not been given help. That's yeah, I and I, I uh, Brian Freeman, uh, who is a Hollywood entertainment attorney, and uh, also Reverend Al Sharpton calling me saying that 
there seems to be a real problem with uh, what they're doing to some of our uh, black women on television. And we might need to look closer at this. And so that's when you started giving me a lot of the statistics and stuff. And I was shocked. And then when Mariah called, I was just blown away that you think you can just take a black woman's intellectual property and not compensate her at all. That, that makes no sense to me whatsoever. And retaliate. Yeah. And retaliate later. Retaliate against you. Why? Yeah. And so that's that's how the struggle. It's not just in the uh, corporate boardrooms. I will tell you, these last uh, four years or so, I have uh, had many corporate executives uh, calling us where we we have bought uh, discrimination claims against uh, banks. I mean, it's gotten out of hand. And maybe this is a larger part of society that's happening. And so you staking your claim, if, you know, so much of what happens on television affects our subconscious minds. I never forget what Malcolm X said that, you know, one of the greatest, most powerful drugs ever created was television. Because, I mean, it has you thinking things in your subconscious mind that you're not even aware that you're thinking. So maybe you need me leaks and Mariah Q and others who come forward, uh, Monique, and state that we demand equal opportunities just like our other white counterparts. Maybe this is the time now. This is the moment. And so if your fans continue to stand up with you and say sign the petition to say, bravo, you have to do better by black women. NBC, you have to do better by black women. Uh, you know, uh, television corporations and Hollywood, you have to do better by black women. Maybe if we can show solidarity for one another and we can unite, we can make a difference. And so you can that'll, make be a final, difference. that'll be the final question I have for you, Mariah. I mean, uh, me. Uh, me, me. <laughs> we can make a difference. We can make a difference. Mariah, too. And I think people need to know that how hard you go to battle for other sisters. That That is really outstanding. I don't think people see that part of you, so it's good. But my final question is, how can black women unite behind one another to all come up together uh, and tell Bravo that you got the treat, if you treat one of us bad, you're treating all of us bad, and we want to have equal opportunities? I think one of the things you can do for now is we have said, I, I said it when we first started this, is that we're not asking you to boycott Bravo uh, forever. We're asking that you help us to um, get them to the table. We need them to sit at the table and talk with us and let's come to some sort of agreement. We want them to come to some sort of agreement with us to work with us through all of this. And then we're happy to all come back on some sort of platform and, and say, hey, you guys, we have worked it out with them and, uh, and we want to praise Bravo and NBC or whoever for coming to the table with us and having a conversation with us. And we've worked through our issues with them and um, we want to move forward, turn your TVs back on and <laughs> let's do this. You know, uh, we, we, we don't want to fight with them. Uh, we want to work something out and, and move forward. Uh, again, I'm surprised that I'm in this situation. Uh, I, I want to say... Nene, people want to know how do they get the petition. Can you tell them that? Uh, it is in my uh, IG. You know, I don't know that much about this thing, but it's in my IG. You know what I'm saying? It says swipe up, and then it's uh, there. And I think it's on my Twitter. Yeah? Okay. And... Um, yep. And I'll put it, I'll find it, I'll put it somewhere in a minute. But it's on my IG, okay? And, now. And then I know you have a passion about helping uh, young black people get into the genre, into the industry about producing their ideas, kind of like Mariah and yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, you know, Mariah and I both have been a little bit quiet as of late. Uh, there it is right there. I think you see it going up. Michelle, it's, she's got it going up. Uh, if I had, if I could put my hand on Michelle, if you could do it one more time, put it back in these comments again. A couple of you guys, if you see the uh, petition, if you put it in the comments, 
um, Mariah and myself and a few other people that have been dealing with this, we've been trying to be a little quiet because then it is difficult. It's hard to get people to understand. It's hard to get people to support. It's, it's been better for me to uh, just lay low and be quiet and kind of try to work it out silently, you know, behind the scenes. Uh, I, I don't want this to be a... Um, a bashing thing. I want to say this though. Can I say this to you? Um, because I don't want people to feel like I'm bashing. And I don't also don't want people to feel like, oh, just because she's not on the show, she's bashing her. No, 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 no. That's not the case. This has opened up many doors of opportunity for me. So let I want you to know that also. Um, there are things behind the scene that has not been done properly. And they do need to be corrected. And the only way to correct them is for all of us to sit down together and work through the issues. And there's nothing wrong with that. You understand? And um, so, unfortunately, we had to come here <laughs> in order to try and get them to hear us so that we can sit down at the table together. So um, I'm hoping that coming here and with your, the help of you fans, um, that we can get them to sit down at the table and work something out. And then we can come back on here again and say, hey, you guys, we all sat together and we worked it out. So let's get these TVs going and let's get these shows, you know, up and get the ratings going and that kind of thing. But um, um, Mar I, I want to ask you something. If, 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 anybody, if anybody can do it, Nina, it's you and Mariah. Um, I mean, <laughs> you all have been trailblazers. Yeah. I mean, in the truest sense, I, I've learned so much about what you all did to yeah. make this uh, reality TV right. become big yeah. and not just uh, black homes, but in yeah. homes all across America. Uh, and then secondly, I, I think it's so appropriate that you know that you standing up gives others the courage to stand up. There may be other reality personalities who may have suffered some uh, disparate treatment, uh, reach out and uh, you will tell them how you all can stand in solidarity. And that's what it's really about. And uh, I will say this, Nene. I got to say something to you too before you go, but go on. You're not, you're not alone. <laughs> you know, my mentor, Reverend Al Sharpton, I mean, so, uh, so many people have reached out and said, no, nah, we all have had similar experiences. So tell Nene she's not by herself and taking on the uh, machine that 